for this topic. I'm very much into self-awareness. That's the point, basically, of today's lecture, self-awareness. So when you're 17 and 18 and you're expected to come to college and expected to know what you want to major in, study it, succeed in it, and live that life for the rest of your life, when society tells you to and expects you to know what you want to do for the rest of your life at 17 or 18, that's truly unrealistic. So people end up changing majors. Or they start questioning, why am I not succeeding in school? Why am I not interested in school? Why am I failing in this class, but I'm thriving on the basketball court or the football field? What, how, what is wrong with me? And then they look at the party culture. How come they're so into drinking, but I'm not? What's so fun about it? What's wrong with me? How come they, this, the, these people have all these different friends, and they would rather party, but I would rather be at the gym at late night working out, Max and, and making gays and shit. <laughs> Everybody has different priorities, and at 17 or 18, for people to be self-aware is, unless you've been through some really traumatic experiences, it's almost you're not even developed enough, you haven't experienced life enough to actually know what you're doing. So then, people start joining these cultures and subcultures. Greek life, huge. Organizations, sports teams. And at 17 or 18, when you're exposed to a certain culture, you think that you are a part of this team or organization or this Greek life and this family and this brotherhood and your sisterhood. You think you're alike, you're exactly alike. So you join them, and then you become a part of their family. And then you're only exposed to what they're doing and the lifestyle that they're living. And because you're surrounded by it, and you're surrounded by people who think that a certain lifestyle is okay, of course you're going to think that it's okay. Of course. So of course you're going to think it's okay to under drink until you're passed out and you don't remember. And of course you're going to think that it's cool to talk about it the next day. Of course you're going to black out. Of course you're not going to remember last night and it's going to make an amazing story the next day. Of course sexual assaults happen and people don't talk about it like it's a big deal because it happens all the time. Everybody does it. But stop making everybody does it as an excuse. And the reason why, well, why I believe, the, one of the reasons why 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, a lot of kids in college communities drink till they don't remember the, the, whatever that happened that night. They have, they have sexual assaults. They do domestic violence. They get addicted to drugs. These are all ways to actually ignore the actual pain, the actual problem. Because at 17 or 18, when you're exposed to a society where the norm is drinking and partying and all that, how do, how, how, how do you know to deal with your problem? How do you even know what that actual problem is? You don't, because we live in a society where you can just get on your phone, Keep scrolling until you feel better. You can just double tap and like it. You don't even know how to have an actual conversation. You don't even know how to have a deep conversation with somebody because all you have to do is just like it or love it or comment, ha ha, and keep scrolling. All you have to do to act as if you're pain free is to take a selfie, put it on your Instagram and get all those likes. Do you know why it feels so good to get likes? It's because it, it releases dopamine in your brain. It's real. It's really like your brain functioning. Your brain loves to be liked. So that's why you keep doing it. So you're on social media, and everybody has a perfect Instagram. Everybody takes pictures of formals. Everybody takes these, oh my god, my breakfast is so healthy. Oh my god, my morning jog was bomb today. Oh my god, blessed. Oh my god, my dog is perfect. Oh my God, I'm Instagram famous. My life is perfect. And then we're promoting this kind of lifestyle where everybody's social media is perfect. So if you realize that you have a problem, like a deep issue, and you, you go on social media, the only, your only escape, and you go on social media, and all you see is other people being perfect, and they have this fake life, and you don't realize that it's fake life, because how, how could you ever know? You look at their fake life, their perfect life, and you're like, how come my life isn't like that? How come my relationship isn't like that? How come my relationship isn't relationship goals? 
How come I'm not making the gains that they're making? How come I don't have that six-pack? How come I'm not, how come my family is not as, as together and like have family barbecues like this person? How come, how come, why, why, why? So when Sam says that you connect through pain, how are you supposed to connect through pain if you don't show your pain? Your social media, your fake life is perfect. How are you supposed to know who has the same problem as you do? How are you supposed to empathize? How are you supposed to realize that you're not alone in your pain? Because society tells you that being emotional is being weak. It tells you that crying is being a pussy, being a little bitch. How many guys feel embarrassed to cry because you feel like you're not being man enough? We're doing this to ourselves. So when Sam says that you have these invisible strings and such, it's because you're not self-aware. So when you're in your when you're involved with your Greek life and you're mad about all of the new regulations, what are you actually mad about? Like, what, what, what are you actually mad about? They're not taking your Greek life, your, your family and your sisters and your brothers away. They're just telling you to drink less because they don't know what else to do anymore. So you need to be self-aware. And I know that it's hard when you're in college to surround yourself with like-minded people who might be going through pain because you don't know where they're at. But that's when it starts with you Maybe it starts on your social media, something as simple as anything on this. Trust me, bro, when you share your pain on social media, your likes will be on fire because that's authenticity. What Sam is trying to say is that people connect through pain. That's why he's talking about suicide and cutting yourself and all that because you're never, you're never, ever, 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 ever alone. Yo, I used to be suicidal. I'm type 1 diabetic. It's real easy for me to die. It really is. I was sexually assaulted. My mother died. My house caught fire. I lost everything in one hour. I, I used to be homeless. You're never alone. I'm not, I'm not telling y'all to like stop partying and stop having fun. Just do it responsibly. But don't ever... Don't ever be afraid to be authentic. Don't ever be afraid to just sit there and take a few deep breaths and become self-aware. If you need help asking yourself questions, I'm a self-awareness coach. I do this for a living. You can just pay me and I'll, I'll even do it for free. That's, I'm guessing what he was trying to say in a much longer scale, but Yo, there's always, there, the whole Greek life and regu new regulation and Eric Barron, there, there's a bigger reason than just trying to get y'all to stop partying. There's always a deeper reason.